South Africa staked a major international karting claim when Gavin Cronier and compatriot Leroy Poulter completely dominated the very first Rotax Max Grand Finals in Puerto Rico in the year 2000, with Cronier taking the crown. The 2001 Grand Finals took place in Langkawi, Malaysia, and Cape Townian Claudio Piazza Musa repeated that feat when he took an opportunistic but well-deserved victory. South Africa, by now a dominant force in the world of Rotax Max Racing, hosted the 2002 Grand Finals and amazingly the former champion's brother Mark Cronier made it three in a row when he dominated proceedings to take the title in front of an ecstatic home crowd at the Bridgestone Swatkops International Karting Circuit in Pretoria. With high expectations on their shoulders, the South African contingent went to Sharm El Sheikh in Egypt for the 2003 Grand Finals. For the first time, the junior category was added to the event and Dion Swart didn't disappoint his supporters by finishing third, with Omar Martin from Spain taking the first ever junior title. So it was up to Jonathan Peterson, Cristiano Morgado and Bjorn Roos to try and emulate their countrymen in the challenge class. After a tight battle with Ricardo van der Ende and Adrian Estasi, Morgado made it four South African champions in a row. The 2004 Rotax Max Grand Finals took place on the island of Lanzarote earlier this year, but this time the South Africans battled in the Junior Max category. Benjamin Salvatore of France took a relatively easy victory from the UK's Adam Christodoulou and New Zealander Earl Bamba. However, South Africa's amazing winning streak continued as the RM1 class was introduced for the first time. Wesley Orr took a comfortable victory and won the country's fifth title in a row. To rub salt in the wounds of the opposition, former champion Cristiano Morgado finished second to Tristan Oman of Great Britain. The South African contingent was understandably ecstatic again and at that point they couldn't really care about the question on everybody's mind. How long can this continue? Rotax Max officials had decided to change the pattern and hold the 2005 Grand Finals just after season's end and the event returned to Malaysia. The capital city Kuala Lumpur is an exotic mix of modern architecture and third world squalor with one of the jewels in the country's crown, the Murak International Karting Circuit on the island of Langkawi. Although the island had been hit hard by the Boxing Day tsunami last year, hard work by local officials had ensured that the facility retained its splendor and rating as one of the best of its kind in the world. More than 140 carters from all over the world gathered to compete in three categories, Max Junior, Senior and RM1, with South Africa again well represented. Former world champion Claudio Piazzamusa regards his 2001 title as the highlight of his career and he returned to the scene with fond memories, this time in a different role. Claudio, you were here in 2002 and won the championship. What's it like being here as a spectator or a mechanic now? Very frustrating. I'd love to be in a cart. Every time I watch them, I just get more and more frustrated. Uh, it's nice to see the South Africans are going pretty well. Uh, and then you watch a lot of other guys struggling and you just want to get in the cart and show them how to do it. Uh, but I did come here to help all the South Africans, give them some advice. Obviously, I know the track quite intimately from racing here in 2002. So far, so good. We'll see now there's time trials. A couple of them are struggling, but it is quite a tricky track. It's 1.2 k's long, very twisty. So if you don't get your rhythm right and ride the curbs properly, you're going to battle. So uh, we keep helping them, and hopefully by the time we get to the pre-final final, they're on top of their game. Uh, the nice thing here is you've got the three heats, which help you to, let's say, steal or learn from the opposition. When you follow them, you can see where they're faster than you. Um, so I like that uh, and hopefully, like I say, Saturday will be a whole new day. As long as they've qualified for the final, then maybe we're in with a shot. And if you were going to put money on, the, on a driver, who would you put money on? In RM1, it's definitely between Wesley Orr and uh, Chris.
Chris Morgada. I don't think they got much opposition there. Uh, in the challenge, it's a lot more difficult. Uh, there's guys like Tristan Oman, uh, who's very fast. He was here in 2002. There's Martin Pierce, who finished here third when I won it. So he also knows the track very well. Uh, very experienced. Uh, there's also Lansdorp. Uh, he's done very few laps in practice, so he's been saving his tyres. Very clever. Uh, he's obviously done the European, so he's comfortable. Uh, we'll see now in time trials. I think he'll be quick, young. So we don't know if the experience is there. A guy like Tristan and Martin Pierce, I think, will run in circles around them. But he has shown to have the talent. So those are the three for challenge. Uh, Rolf is struggling a little bit at the moment in the challenge, but hopefully we'll get him up there by the time we get to the pre-final and final. In the juniors, Arnold Neveling's got a weight problem. He's like 13 kilos overweight. Um, so that is a big handicap for him. Uh, hopefully it won't make a big difference in the race because he seems to be fast. He, he's on top of the, his game. Uh, Jonathan Bian seems to be pretty okay, but I think he's, uh, he's lacking that last sort of, let's say, 10 created a fury of mother nature and disaster struck when monsoon rain came down on the penultimate day, flooding the circuit and surrounding areas. The official practice sessions and some of the qualifying heats had already taken place, but the delay while mopping up operations continued for virtually the entire Friday would have a major impact on the rest of the weekend's program. Some scheduled qualifying heats in each category had to be cancelled, which would make it even more difficult for drivers to get into the pre-finals junior category the South Africans were struggling. Ricardo this was your first international event and also the rain made it difficult. Yeah the rain was uh, made the track very wet out there. It made they made the vision very poor and that was very tough for some of the drivers. Some of the drivers couldn't cope in the rain where I, I think I, I, I was quite fast in the rain. Uh, I started off in 14th and I'm um, I got taken out in the fourth corner. I then made my way back up to 12th from last. So yeah, I'm quite happy with my result. Setting the pace, however, British driver Ben Cooper. Ben, you must be feeling quite confident about this race meeting. Uh, yeah, we are. After um, right, we've been racing against uh, everyone in the European series, and this is most of like the people that have been racing the European series. Unfortunately, we missed the first round of the Euros. And we managed to win the next two, and then unfortunately we had a mechanical failure, so I managed to, well, I lost the championship on that. But I'm happy with this, how we're going, so it's good. And this circuit, do you find it tricky or are you enjoying it? Um, it's very physical, and because of the heat, you, you look, you're sweating a lot, it makes your arms ache. But it's a good track, it's very like, tight, twisty, but it also has its fast points. All set then for the start of the pre-final in the Rotax Max Junior category. Over 15 laps in pole position then, Ben Cooper from Great Britain. Next to him, Kenneth Hildebrandt from Estonia. Calvin Wong from Malaysia and David Sutton from the second row. Sutton from Great Britain under the starters' orders and a good getaway from at least those on the front row. And into the lead goes Kenneth Hildebrandt. It's Hildebrandt to take the lead from second on the trip. Everybody clear through the first few corners and it's Hildebrandt to see like uh, Cooper in second position and David uh, Sutton is in third position. The South African started way back on this grid. Jonathan Leon started 14th. Next in was uh, Abu Nierling and Ricardo Reciti certainly struggling starting 53rd on the grid. We'll keep an eye out for the progress of the South Africans in this race. But at the front, it's a battle between Estonia and Great Britain. And look at the gap that Hildebrandt has been able to open already. And he's Cooper in second position. He's changed by Sutton. Well, that's uh, Ben Grunwell from Malaysia, the local man, into fourth position from sixth on the grid. And watch out for Daniel Schneider, he's from Austria. He has started way down the order and uh, he's up into first position already. As our leaders starting to open up a gap there, top three, four, five now starting to in fact uh, stretch out a little bit as they come around down the uh, back straight. Number 24, Hildebrandt from 15, Cooper 48, Sutton. Grunwald, number 22 in fifth and uh, fourth position, and uh, Daniel Schnellweger from Austria in the fifth position. He's number 45. Watch him. He looks to be a danger man in this race. Oh, pretty close there. Any mistakes from those at the front can see a shake-up in the order, but it does seem that Hildebrandt has got to be the uh, favourite to 
uh, win this race. Remember, this is the pre-final, and the order in which they finish in this race will determine the starting grid for the all-important final. These drivers, all between the ages of 13 and 16, they uh, use one chassis and one chassis only. This year, the Swiss Atlas Magic chassis. So everything absolutely equal. The Rotax engine developing 15 kilowatts of power, and it's all up to the driver. The setup skills, the driving skills. It's an equal playing field for everybody involved here. That's the magic. That's the idea of the Rotax Max uh, series. Down the straight, uh, back straight once again, and it's turning into a magical uh, lead between these two drivers, Hildebrandt and Cooper. Not to pull away from the rest of the field now, but again, watch out for number three, number 45, Daniel Schnellweger from Austria on the inside. There it is. There's a move up the order. Schnellweger now in the fourth position. So, Hildebrandt, Cooper, Sutton, and Schnellweger. They are fighting it out for the lead. Pretty soon, I'm sure Schnellweger will be right there on the party. Hildebrandt still leading from Cooper, Sutton, Schnellnegger and Grunwell from Thailand up into uh, fifth position. So it seems that the uh, battle for the victory in this pre-final in the Rotex Max Junior category here at the Vorak International Park and Circuit on the beautiful resort island of Langkawi in Malaysia. And they've certainly done a great job to recover from uh, the last year's disaster. But let's focus on the track action at the moment. The fine battle for a second between Cooper and Sutton and all of this has allowed He's going to win this one unless he makes a mistake or has a mechanical disaster. Cooper in second position and that man Schnellweger into third place. So these three are going to start in the first three positions in the all important final later on. And uh, certainly they have deserved their position, driving absolutely faultlessly as far as we can pick it up from here. And uh, Hildebrandt has staked his claim. He is got to be the favorite to win the, uh, the title come the end of the uh, out there for uh, Hildebrandt, protected from Cooper by a couple of seconds, and the Schnellweger with a big second back. So, five the flag for Estonia, Kenneth Hildebrandt, from Great Britain, Ben Cooper, and the Austrian Daniel Schnellweger. South Africa's Arnold Neverling, the best of them, in 16th position. Starting from pole position in the pre-final for the Rotax Max Senior category, Dutchman Luke Klamsdorf. Luke, you're starting from first. Would you rather be on the inside or the outside of the track? Uh, of course, on the inside because uh, you know uh, the inside is always uh, it's a rule in karting. If you're on the inside, you're you know the first in the corner. So of course, I prefer uh, the inside. And some drivers seem to have been getting a good advantage from start starting second and being on the inside for the next corner. Yeah, because uh, they don't really watch uh, the start because uh, some people make false starts and they just let it go. So it's a bit tricky here, but uh, yeah, we'll see. So last door in pole position for local idol Dion Aaron Lim from Malaysia in second place. Both of them get a good start. Watch out also for Britain's driver Martin Pierce and the Chinese driver from uh, Hong Kong Ross Jamison in fourth position as they go through the first set of corners. No problem so far, and it's Mark Dorf who has the lead. Lim in second position, a good start there for the local man. Sarah, David Sarah from Australia, he's the Australian champion, started in fifth place, he's up in the third now, and uh, Ross Jamison in fourth place. He runs under the Chinese flag, some more uh, challenges there in the back. Uh, in fact, it's uh, Jamison on Sarah, but he doesn't make it stick. As the field comes down the main grandstand uh, straight, and the gap already opening there for Klumpdorf. He came into this race as one of the favorites. He's taken advantage of his pole position and now he's starting to stretch his lead. But watch out for the local hero who knows this uh, Morak track like the back of his hand, Aram Lim. And he's going to certainly be in there to find challenge for the win. Once again, one must keep in mind that the result of this race will determine the starting order for the all important final and that those drivers who keep that in mind are not going to take any unnecessary chances. 
start finish straight. It's 1 1 2 Pazdor, 1 for 6 Lim, 1 for 3 Sarah, Ross Jamison, 1 1 8 in fourth position. Watch out also for Indonesian driver Rama Zalindro. He's in fifth position in number 107. So uh, he started to make his move as well. He qualified outside the top six and into fifth position already. And he's certainly uh, looking like one of the dangers. But this is a battle for second position as Glasdor starts to stretch his lead. It's uh, Sarah on Lim. Now Lim, as we say, knows the circuit very, very well. And he will know exactly how to defend that second position. They need to keep in mind that they can't get involved in any kind of funny business because that will certainly compromise their starting positions for the final. One, two, three, four, five drivers now battling it out for the lead. And they are starting to stretch away from the rest of the field. Those five, it's Hansdorf, Lim, Serras, all the order remains the same. Jamison in fourth, uh, Danindra in fifth position. Now some of the drivers have uh, been struggling a little bit earlier today because of the fact that the, uh, the rain is really took away all the, uh, the rubber in fact is pretty green. At the moment it doesn't seem like they are struggling too much for any grip. It's going to depend on how they uh, come to grips, so to speak, with the conditions here at the Morak circuit. It's still very cloudy out there. It's uh, relatively cool, in fact, at this time of the year. But uh, they are, uh, it's, it's very humid. It's, uh, it's very difficult conditions here as they are driving. You can see the conditions in the back there against the mountain. Back to the action at the front of the field. Now a three-way battle between Hansdorf, Lim and Seyra. While the South African Ralph Udendahl has made uh, some positions, he's up into 14th position. The uh, Max Senior class, for drivers of 15 years and older, they all use the uh, same CRG road level chassis. The Rotax engine in this category develops around about 21 kilowatts, and they all have the same Bojo tires. Hansdorf and Lim fighting it out for the lead. So it's developed into a two way struggle get into the lead and get the pole position for the final. It's Klonsdorf and local hero Lim. Serra still in third position. Danindro has moved up into fourth place in the danger man again. Like uh, in the previous, on previous occasions, Tristan Oman of Great Britain has moved up from uh, outside the top six into fifth position. And he's starting to make his uh, presence felt here, closing the gap to the front runners. He's somewhere in the background there. So it is number 112, Klonsdorf, 126, Lim. Serra 143 in third place, 107 Danindra in fourth place, 132. That's uh, somebody to watch out for, Tristan Oman from Great Britain. Very, very uh, uh, competitive category, the uh, Max Senior class. 51 drivers from 44 countries entered for this, and of course only 34 will make it through to the final. The top 34 will make it through to the final. And that is going to be a battle royale, believe me, the best. Rotax Max drivers in the world in action. Luke Rasdorp currently leading this race. He's been trying for this title on a couple of occasions. Last year was one of the favorites coming in as the uh, European champion, but then, uh, of course, he had some problems at Lanzarote and uh, just couldn't make it. Tristan Oman, the current European champion, as we say, the danger man in this race. And uh, he will probably be glad that there are no South Africans here because this is his third opportunity, Tristan Oman. And every time in the past, there was a South African ahead of him on the podium. He's certainly hoping that he will be able to uh, bring home the bacon in this, uh, in this category this season. But all eyes on Luke Klausdorp. He's not put a wheel wrong so far. Flying the flag for the Netherlands and taking advantage of the battles behind him. But Lim is still there. Aaron Lim from Malaysia, the local hero, is still trying to put up the charge and trying to close that gap. Maybe he's just waited a little bit longer to uh, look after his tyres. And he's now certainly starting to get closer and closer to the race leader. Are we in for a surprise? As they come around the main straight once again, and Klonsdorp looking over his shoulder, 30 laps to go. So there's plenty of time for Mr. Lim to close the gap to the race leader. Well, that body language says it all. And that can often be a giveaway. If the driver is concerned about maybe his car's handling or the tyres, the grip levels or whatever. Oh, that is uh, that Shafiq Ali of Malaysia, local driver. And the end of his race, what a disaster for him. And he will start at the back of the grid in the finals. Another disaster, this time for Alexandre Mata of Portugal. On the final lap now, Klansdorf is going to take this one. He will get pole position for the final. Lim still in second position, but he hasn't been able to do anything about the uh, dominant performance of Klansdorf. Serra in third position. Danindro will finish in fourth ahead of Tristan Oman of uh, Great Britain. So he will start in third position. Well done then to Luke Klansdorf of Holland. He takes it from Lim, Serra, Danindra and Omen.
South African Ralph Windell finishing in 14th position. Reigning champion Wesley Orr has pole position for the Rotax R1 pre-final. Wesley, you've got the pace and you've got a win behind you. You've got a lot of work to do. Ah, uh, yeah. As all racing drivers know, yeah, bad days and good days. Yesterday was uh, a terrible day for me. There's a few pipe jumped off. But today it looks like I'm back on form, so hopefully in the pre-final, if I can have the pace I've had now in this heat, I'll be able to come back and hopefully be there for the final. Leading the field for the start of the pre-final, South African Cristiano Morgado former challenge champion and he finished second in the RM1 category earlier this year for the 2004 Grand Prix. Wesley in fifth position. Now all eyes will be on the performance of the South Africans and it is Morgado who gets a good start, takes the lead but watch out for Wesley Hall. Started in fifth position and is up into third already and now he's challenging. It looks like uh, Beckenen, is it uh, Beckenen? Yes. And he goes into his second position. Wesley Orr immediately pounces early on in this race. He started in fifth because he had a bad result in one of the earlier heats. And he certainly made his intentions known. So it is the two South Africans. It's Morgado and Wesley Orr in uh, second position. Then comes the Finnish driver, Essa Pekkanen, who is under threat from Ben George. It goes through. Ben George from Austria moves into third, third position. So he's also on a run here. It is South Africa 1-2. In third position, Ben George Pekkanen from Finland in fourth position. Then Arya Setiaki, Arya Setiaki from Indonesia in third position. But all eyes on the back at the front end. A change there as Wesley Orr goes into the lead. The reigning RM1 champion goes into the lead. He wants pole position for the final. So it is all Morgado George in third position as Morgado wants to fight back. Now these two South Africans should not get involved in, all, in uh, any kind of funny business. Look at this. And in second place goes Ben Orr. Uh, ben George now. Ben George into second place. Taking advantage of the two South Africans. And Morgado comes back. Morgado into second position now. And this has allowed Wesley Orr to put away will be very happy with what's going on behind him. We see some other positional changes or at least attempts at uh, positional changes further back. But this is the fight in the race as Wesley Orr pulls away from Cristiano Morgado who has to keep a very good, a good eye on uh, Ben George. Setiaki has moved up into fourth position already. So he's gone past with uh, Pekkanen and Karsten Müller of Germany has moved up into sixth place. Well, Wesley Orr is showing his class here. He contested the European Series but uh, had a bad experience bad event in the final, so uh, he's here as the reigning champion in the RM1 category, which incidentally will change its uh, nomenclature uh, next season and will then be known as the DD2 category, DD standing for direct drive. This is an all RM1 uh, chassis engine package, engine that provide, uh, providing 25 kilowatts of uh, grunt for these drivers and uh, they're all using the RM1, uh, RM1 chassis as well as the Mojo tires. Nobody's got an answer for the flying South African, Wesley Orr. Still very young and he has an eye on international single seat racing. He's certainly going on his performances both in South Africa and Europe. Uh, and on an international level in the whole past few years, this young man has got a bright future in international motor racing. No doubt about that. Uh, Justin Melton from the USA out of this race. Some damage to his car. On the final lap now, Wesley Orr well on his way to the victory for the pole position. There's the checkered flag, and he gets pole position for the final. Puts him in the absolute ideal position to take a second championship in a row. Uh, Cristiano Morgado finishes in second place, just ahead of uh, Ben George. With Setiaki in fourth, ahead of Karsten Miller. Michael von Rooyen, the third South African, in sixth position. But the South African certainly very strong in the RM1 category. An expectant crowd in the stands waiting for the finals in the three categories. Can South Africa do it again? We'll bring you all the action from the junior, the senior and the RM1 finals after the break.
pre-finals behind them and everybody knowing what they have to do in the finals ahead. The competitors introduced to the crowd, the patron of the event, the Prime Minister Dr. Mahathir Mohamed. Mention was palpable. Most pressure arguably on the South African contingent as they were determined to once again fly their flag on the podium. Their competitors obviously equally as determined. Final in the road track, Max Junior 2005. Kenneth Hillebrand from Estonia on pole position from Ben Cooper of Great Britain. Daniel Schnellnegger of Austria, then James Grunwell of Thailand, Kazuki Hiramine of Japan, and Kelvin Wong. position as we get underway. This is going to be a long and hard race. This, of course, is for the title. And no holes will be barred. So, action already at the back of the field. And, oh, there's a huge one of this. This big traffic jam. It's, oh, and what does that happen to Jonathan Pia? Up a bit before he got there. So, this is an absolute disaster for him. Some of the others, and Andy Johnson, up at 29. Also, number 47. That's Marlon Stockinger of the Philippines.
Jonathan uh, Vian rightly recovered from that first uh, lap incident down into the 16th place. And Ricardo Rossiti been struggling the entire weekend. He's in 19th place. So not far to go now as they come around once again down the main straight. And uh, Schnellegger leading Kupa and Hiramene right there with them already. The number 25 part is the challenge on the inside. Kupa going into second position. This has allowed Hiramene to join the party. And here comes uh, Schnellegger once again. A tit for tat back. And Hiramene is certainly in with a chance there. Getting past the hearing a bit of a bump. Kupa there showing him that he's there. ahead of Ben Cooper from the United Kingdom, then Akil Kushlani, James Kennedy and Christopher Brockler from Canada. There's the man of the moment. While he goes onto the podium, Arnold Neverland from South Africa finishing in 15th position ahead of Jonathan Dion. Trophy that he's been racing for all year, getting the trophy and the flowers there from Dr. Mahathir Mohamed. Kenneth, that was an awesome win. Yeah, thank you. Uh, how was the race? It was great for me, yeah. But but you made it look easy. Oh, it got easier because the other one started uh, throwing, how is it, <laughs> passing each other. And yeah, I got my gap. Thanks there. The final for the Rotax Max Senior category over 25 laps. Luke Klansdorp of uh, Holland from Arem Lim of Malaysia as they get at the start of the moment. Also one of the danger men here, starting in fourth position. Can everybody get through the first corner clean? There is uh, Danindro. Danindro, who's taken the lead from fourth position on the grid. Um, Rama Danindro of Indonesia taking the lead. Oh, and involved there in the clash. Bastian Rasper, he's in the 136 car from Germany. And Sergio Rodriguez from Spain in 139. Their race certainly over. It looks like a lot of damage there to both cars. And uh, that must be a big, big, big disappointment for them and their supporters. Meanwhile, in the main straight, the top three, uh, top four breaking away. Uh, Danindro from Oman. Tristan Oman has moved into second position. Uh, then Plumstorp, there is another retirement. Ross Jamison from China out of this race as well. So Danindro leading from Oman. Plumstorp has dropped to third position from pole position. So he's got some work to do there. Once again, is Mr. Rasper from Germany. And that is a clear sign that he's out of this race. Meanwhile, it is 107, Danindro leading from 132, Oman. And there's just been a challenge of Pierce going into third position, taking Klansdorf uh, for third place. So Klansdorf drops down to fourth position. Well, Klansdorf has certainly not had a good start to this race. He won the pre-final with ease. And it's certainly been a very hard race for him at this early stage. At least, and here comes Klansdorf once again. I think I just saw him going back into third place. Just have to confirm that it is Danindra Owen. Yes, there is Klausdorf into third place. Martin Pierce down into fourth place. So these two are fighting it out for the final podium position as it stands at the moment. But of course, it's still very, very early days in this race. It is, however, a, a, a fair assumption. I would reckon that the first four or five will provide the winner, the champion for 2005, as the rest of the field battle it out behind them. Drivers must keep it in mind that they've got a long race ahead of them. 25 laps in total, so it's clever not to get involved in too many fights at the beginning of this race. 
Rama Danindra from Indonesia, still leading Tristan Omen from Great Britain, Luke Glansdorp from uh, Holland in third position. And uh, Glansdorp has set up his cart that uh, the tie has only come in in the second half of the race, so I reckon he's probably playing a tactical game at the moment, just sitting there and waiting and seeing how things develop. Martin Pierce still in fourth position, David Serra of Australia in fifth place, then comes the New Zealander Joshua Hart and Aram Dim of Malaysia drop back to seventh place with the South African Ralph Kundal in 16th position. Well, this fight continues and Danindro, we don't know whether he set up his cart maybe to try and open up a gap at the beginning of the race and then hope that he can hold on to it um, as the race progresses or the other way around. It's uh, certainly a strategic decision taken uh, in the pitch before the start of the race by the various teams. Uh, top four now starting to break well clear of David Serra of uh, Australia. He's the reigning Australian champion, but at the moment he's got uh, no answer to the pace of the four drivers ahead of him. Now Danindro, can he hold on to this lead? He's certainly not safe at all. There's no gap to play with between him and Tristan Omen. Omen has got Luke Klankorp, I reckon uh, the man who's got to be the favourite. He had such an easy race in the pre-final that his tyres must still be in a very, very good condition. Still a long way to go in this race. Uh, 19 laps or so still to go in this race. And the order um, has not changed. These drivers are playing a tactical game quite clearly. They're not attacking and they're not defending in the moment. And everybody well aware of the situation as far as the tyres are concerned. There are the gaps. You can see that there's really nothing between the top four. And it's not that difficult because it's quite clear on the screen as well. We go down the order. All eyes are ever on this fight at the front of the field. An intro from Indonesia. Omen from Great Britain. He's a man who wants to win the title. He's been denied on so many occasions and he's positioned himself well at the moment. He's uh, not getting involved in uh, any funny business uh, with uh, those behind him. Luke Klansdorf uh, just behind him. Michael Pierce was still watching and waiting for things to develop and things to happen. About uh, 18 laps, just a little bit more than 18 laps still to go in this race. So uh, still very early days. Looking over his shoulder there is Rama Danendra of Indonesia. He cannot be too concerned now, or does he know something that we don't? Does he know something about maybe the car setup or the uh, condition of his tires? Well, he's got a bit of a comfortable lead at the moment. But, uh, I suspect what's happening is that the three behind him are uh, just sitting and uh, playing the waiting game. Once again, watching and looking over his shoulder, that does uh, tend to convey the message that he's a little bit concerned. Best lap for the race so far, behind his game. He's a bit of a, a revelation, one has to say. He was fast right throughout this weekend, but here he is leading the final. If he can only remain in this position, then he can win this, uh, this title for 2005. It was a great for Indonesia to get the World Championship behind their name, starting uh, also growing uh, at the rapid rate in the uh, Middle East and Far East and uh, the countries that are rising oh, out. Uh, chances ahead of him. Rama Danindro from Indonesia is still leading this race. Tristan Oman still in second position, but Martin Pierce has moved up into third place ahead of Luke Klansdorp. Danindro using his uh, local knowledge. And here comes Klansdorp on the inside, and Klansdorp moves into third position again. It's been a, a fierce battle between him and Martin Pierce. Pierce has finished the third right here in 2001 when South African uh, Claudio Pierce took that championship. He would certainly like to uh, uh, give a strong performance once again. At the moment, however, he's dropping back. He's talking about the Indonesian drivers as we see some battles going on a little bit further back behind the uh, top four. The Indonesian drivers, of course, uh, regarding this really as a, a home circuit, it was Indonesia not too far away. In fact, something like 15 kilometers away over the sea from uh, the Morak circuit where we are racing on at the moment. Back to the action at the front, however, the top four graving uh, is still pulling away from uh, David Serra in fifth position, the uh, Australian, then Joshua Hart from New Zealand in 116. He is in uh, sixth place, and Aaron Lim in seventh position, the fastest lap of the race, set by uh, Tristan Oman, currently in second position, and he's certainly going to try very hard. This is his third attempt at this title, but not if Luke Klansdorp can have anything to say about it, and Klansdorp goes into second position, 10 laps to go, and Klansdorp has now signals to his intention. Looking over his shoulder there, see if he's uh, opened up the gap, and another change there as Pierce goes into third position. Pierce now uh, dropping uh, Oman down to fourth place. Maybe Oman is just trying too hard too early in this race, and is now paying the price. 
He's dropped back, uh, back to fourth position now as um, Danindra still leads, but for how long? Plansdorf pulling away from Pearson Omen behind him. Plansdorf certainly now the man to watch out for. Look at this fight further back. Uh, number 116 is hard. Then Aaron Lim goes to uh, sixth position. Then Tin Sritlal of Thailand. Sarah down in eighth position. Ranut Kalas all involved in this battle behind the leaders, chopping and changing positions. Ranut Kalas from Estonia and Juan Sanso of uh, Costa Rica in tenth position. But uh, certainly the action at the front, not quite as intense as the action behind them. Five laps to go, and Ramadan Indra has been caught by Lux Lanzor. It's going to be a battle between these two for the senior title in 2005. Martin Pierce still in third position, and Kristen Oman is in fourth, but he's got no answer. He's dropping back. It's going to be another disappointment for uh, Oman, but now Ramadan Indra is under some serious pressure from Lux Lanzor. And Lanzor knows that he's got him. He has been able to look after his tyres. He used the setup of his cart so that he has the advantage in the latter part of the race. And now Danindro knows that he's under attack. He's taking the defensive line. He knows it's just a, a matter of time. Can he hold on? Not too many laps still to go. And uh, this is going to be a grandstand finish. Glasgow on the attack. He's all over it. He goes left, he goes right. And Danindro doesn't know where the next attack will come from. Once again, all the defensive makes his heart as wide as he possibly can. And will he be able to hold on? That's the question. The uh, spectators on the edge of their seats as they go down the main straight. Will we see an attack? Now here comes Glasdorf. Late on the brakes. He's got him. Will he be able to make a stick? It was very late on the brakes. He's going to lose some momentum, but he's got the line for the right-hander. And now for the left-hander, looking over his shoulder. Where's the man? That's Glasdorf. has made it stick. So Glasdorf from Holland. Well, he's shown all the promise so far this weekend. He's uh, got to the front and he's done it absolutely perfectly, but Danindra is fighting back. Danindra wants to do it for his country, for uh, Indonesia and all of this. Has allowed Martin Pierce also now to close up. Are we going to see a three-way battle for the lead over the last few laps? And uh, Lonsdorf just holding on there. He's not taking the defensive line. He seems to be um, quite convinced that he's got the speed, he's got the traction uh, under braking, he's got the traction out of the corners as well, so that he can hold on to the ideal racing line. But it's a fine, fine balance, as Danindro is certainly in a position to fight back, and Martin Pierce is in a position to take advantage of any uh, disaster striking the two ahead of him. But we are getting closer to the final stages of this race now. This is the final lap, and Luke Blankdorf from Holland has opened up a gap. This is going to be his title. Last year, he was very disappointed not winning the uh, junior title. He came back this year for the seniors, and he's got it. There's the checkered flag. Look, Blansdorf for Holland does it, and he gets the checkered flag ahead of Robert Danindra. A good drive, a solid drive from him. And Martin Pierce from Great Britain finishes in third position. But there is the man. That's the champion for 2005. Martin Pierce in third position, Tristan Oman very disappointed to finish fourth, uh, Joshua Hart in uh, fifth position ahead of Aaron Lim of Malaysia. So all smiles on the podium for the uh, Dutchman, Luke Lansdor, who's worked very hard for this, come back from disappointment, what a drive it was. Luke, that was an awesome win, but you left it a bit late, were you worried? Um, I was pretty worried, yeah, because of um, my card, my setup. I knew it would be good after 10 laps, but if you're lying on the fourth place, your heart starts boom, 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 is it going to be or is going to be okay? So uh, when I took the lead, I, I felt fantastic. Two South Africans on the front row for the RM1 final. Chris, you've got a difficult task. Where's this going quickly? Have you got an answer for him? Well, uh, I'm just going to go out there, do my best, uh, in, uh, trying to get uh, things going as fast as they should, but I've been battling a little bit with some some aspects of the setup, but I uh, uh, hope, hope you'll have a good race. Have you made big changes to the cart between races? Yeah, I've been changing, trying things. Um, the Wes has been very, very quick on this track. Uh, uh, it's, it's a very different track. It's quite uh, erratic. There's bumps, there's tight corners. Um, I, I prefer like a fastest uh, flowing track, but you have to drive what, what the track is on the day, and uh, Wesley's really taking to this track really well. He has indeed, as Wesley Orr on the front row. In fact, the pole position next to him is fellow South African Cristiano Morgado as they get the starting order. And the South African goes into the lead. Wesley Orr takes the lead there from pole position. He's got, uh, oh, it's uh, George. It's Ben George in second position. Cristiano Morgado has dropped back to third place. Two cars involved there. 
Carsten Muller and uh, Erez Machut, Muller from uh, Germany. They didn't quite pick up what happened there, but uh, certainly their race effectively over as we go back to the battle at the front. And it is Wesley Orr from uh, Ben George Morgado and the, the other South African, Michael van Rooyen, is up into fourth place as they go down the straight once again. And Wesley Orr has now staked his uh, position quite clearly. He had pole position, got a great start. He is a good, good, good starter. And uh, he has got Ben George from Austria on his tail, but for how long? That's the question. Cristiano Morgado in third as the rest of the field shuffle the uh, order further back. It's the first four pulling away. And here's another look at that first corner incident with uh, Karsten Muller and Erez Mahput. Wesley Orr leading the field from uh, Ben George. Cristiano Morgado involved in a huge fight with his uh, fellow South African Michael van Rooyen in third and fourth respectively. Then Alexandre Engels of Belgium in fifth place and uh, the Canadian Marco De Leo in sixth position but Wesley Orr is pulling well clear of the rest of the field he certainly the uh, class of the field has been except for that uh, that one bad result in one of the earlier heats and Wesley Orr as the reigning champion certainly the uh, the uh, uh, favorite to take this title if he does so he will become the first man in the uh, history of the uh, Rotax Max Challenge to uh, successfully defend his world title but it's early days anything can still happen the moment he seems to have it all under control, George all under control in second position, but has Morgado got it all under control in third place. He's got Michael van Rooyen right there with him at the moment. And uh, watch out also for the Belgian driver Engels and the uh, Canadian driver De Leo. Down the main straight once again. They're starting to stretch out now. No real battles going on. Not quite halfway yet, about 17 or 16 and a half laps still to go. Wesley Orr has broken well clear of the rest of the field and starting to disappear into the distance. However, Ben George and Cristiano Morgado are fighting hand and nail, tooth and nail for that second position. It's still George in second place, but Morgado is looking more and more threatening. Michael van Rooyen is still in fourth position, so the three South Africans inside the top four can they make it top three. Are in one category, the uh, premier category in the Rotax Max uh, racing series. And next year, here's the challenge. It is Morgado on the inside, barging his way through past the Ben George, going into second position. Can he make it stick this time as Ben George comes back? George looking on the outside there. Morgado says, come, let's go. Let's try and catch the leader. Let's not fight. This has been the trend uh, right throughout almost uh, in just about every category. But uh, George is certainly not looking uh, too keen to uh, follow that strategy. Wesley all breaking away and still pulling away from this as they continue to fight with one another at the moment it's uh, about four seconds between all and this battle between morgado and george and it's playing right in the hands of wesley Orr. that is leo mar one of the local drivers from malaysia unfortunately out of the race wesley Orr. he's got the entire main straight in fact more than the main straight lead over Morgado still in second position George is still in third but Michael van Rooyen is right there in fourth place and Alexandre Engels of Belgium in fifth position it's now become a battle for second between these four drivers and this is going to allow Wesley Orr to even further extend his lead he's well on his way to his second consecutive RM1 title but let's concentrate on this battle with 10 laps still to go Cristiano Morgado would obviously clearly like to make it uh, South African one two, and if Michael van Rooyen now in fourth position can only find a way past Ben George, it could be a South African one two three. But can he do it? George is not going to make that easy on him, and uh, he's certainly not going to give him any gifts at all. Everybody wants to finish as high up as they possibly can. If you can't win it, you want to get up as high as possible, even if it's uh, outside the podium. Well, what is clear at the moment is that Wesley Orr, barring any mechanical... Uh, failures or any mistakes which is unlikely is going to take this title the rm1 category next year to become dd2 dd as we said earlier on for direct drive that's the technology used in this category there's no chain involved it's a direct drive system with a two-speed transmission which is operated with the pedal shift on the steering wheel and of course it also has uh, a reverse gear which uh, disengages the clutch Done with all the technicalities back to the uh, racing action and Morgado is fighting very very hard we've got nine laps to go in this race less than nine laps to go in fact as we uh, see the battle continues for second position how long can Morgado carry on 
Two laps to go in this race, and Wesley Orr well on his way as a change there as uh, Alexander Engels goes into fourth position past Michael von Rooyen, who wants to fight back, goes down to fifth place to South African. As we say, only two laps to go. The race order is still Wesley Orr, Cristiano Mugardo in second position. Now Ben George in third, still in fact in third, then Alexandre Engels in fourth. But not for long, here he comes on the inside and uh, Engels goes into third position. Michael von Rooyen around the outside of George into fourth place. So George has just lost two positions in two corners. Race order as it stands at the moment. It's Wesley Orr, Cristiano Morgado now starting to pull away there as these three are fighting it out for the final podium position. You can see 12 and a half seconds and more between uh, Wesley Orr and uh, Cristiano Morgado. What an absolutely dominating performance by the South African. And uh, in the third place now, it is the Belgian Alexandra Engels. But at the front, it is all eyes on Wesley Orr. He's on to his final lap now. He's going to make it two in a row for 2005. The checkered flag, two in a row for 2005. The sixth consecutive championship for South Africa. And they continue with the domination of this form of racing. So Wesley Orr. That's the signal. He's learnt it from Fernando Alonso, his second title in a row, and he does it all in the same season. And once again, Cristiano Morgado on the second step of the podium, just like these two did it in Lanzarote earlier this season. Alexandre Engels, a good comeback drive there into third ahead of Ben George and Michael van Rooyen. And this man is starting to get used to this situation, proudly waving the South African flag there on the podium and uh, receiving his uh, second RM1 Championship trophy. What a fantastic season for Wesley Orr. Wesley, you made that look so easy. Uh, I think I've been working hard all weekend. Um, it's paid off, as you can see. I've been getting my setups right, and I think my car is 150,000% right. Because everybody was still battling with the understeer and oversteer. I corrected that two, two heats ago, so I knew for the final I was the most prepared, and, and it paid off. I saw you looking behind you a couple of times. Were you wondering where everybody was? Well, for the first couple of laps, I knew they were behind me, and then I just kept my head down and just kept concentrating. And then after lap six, they just kind of disappeared into the distance, and I was thinking, geez, but they had a bit of a tangle, so that was the main thing. That's why they fell back. But I think if everybody was equalized, no fighting, uh, I still would have pulled away, but not that far. So Wesley all continues with the tradition set by Gavin Cronier, Claudio Piazza Musso, Mark Cronier, and Cristiano Mugato before him. Solid drive from eighth on the grid to finish on the podium from Belgian Alexandre Engels. How did he see his performance? Um, I don't know really. In fact, um, I took a quite good start because I came out six and I started eight. And uh, after I, I saw I closed the gap slowly, slowly. And uh, yeah, after I passed them one by one, only. I think maybe I, I could finish second by passing Morgado, but uh, Ben Roche passed me two laps before the end, so I had to fight the game with him for, to take back the third place, and so I lost too much time, and I, I had to finish third, but it's already a good place. So six in a row for South Africa. Can they reach the magic number seven in 2006? Brought to you by Engine and its associate sponsors.